they call him Seaton, the man of legends. What is up ladies and gentlemen, it is Seaton here, hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the most difficult task in our cage. Well, probably not the most difficult, but it will have you in frustration, it will make you cry, it will make you hate everything about the game and more, and it's called Taming World Bosses. As you can see, I have this beautiful, beautiful kind of dragon gargoyle pet here who fights with me in combat. He has a ton of cool abilities, uh, such as a trip, a shield, a fire breath that I haven't unlocked yet, and tons of cool stuff. But basically, in Arc Age, there are a total of six different world bosses you can tame and have as your pet. Now, you're probably wondering, how do you do this? How do I go about capturing a world boss? And that is what this guide is for, so that's pretty damn convenient for you. Via level working, under leather goods, there are two different types of taming nets. There is a mythic taming net and a legendary taming net. If you hover over the nets and see the tooltip description, you will see the legendary taming one allows you to capture two different bosses, which are Windlord and Far Cry the Wanderer. Both of these bosses have a location on each one of the continents, so there could be two of them active at any time. Um, you know, one on the eastern continent and one on the western. So um, they're kind of in the starting zones. The legendary bosses, in terms of actual boss difficulty and bringing them down, are much easier than the mythic ones. The mythic ones are significantly harder in terms of difficulty of the actual boss itself. So the way that it works is initially you will have to craft a taming net, and you can do that with 20 memory inks, very easy material to get, you can get it from the general merchant for 10 silver, uh, emeralds and uh, rubies can be found via mining, uh, or very cheaply on the auction house usually, and then you have fine leather, which is basically um, made via combining 10 leather with one small seed oil, uh, let's see if it's anywhere around here it should be yeah so it's 10 level one small seed oil so in total that is 150 leather and 15 small seed oil so basically the fine leather is the main expense of crafting a mythic taming net or a legendary taming net they pretty much have the same uh, materials apart from the gems change slightly however the gems are really really cheap usually you can get all the gems you need for under five gold for each net and at least on my server, which is Dehuta on the EU. So, uh, yeah, they're very easy to get, so uh, shouldn't be a problem at all. The main expense is the fine leather. So, nets cost anywhere from, that really depends on your server, from about 50 gold to 150 gold to initially craft, um, just as a bit of a heads up. Now, nets can be thrown at these world bosses when they are on uh, under 10% health. Now, there is kind of like a bit of a rumor going around that the lower you get the boss's health, so you can throw the net anytime under 10%, but if you get it to 1%, for example, you have a greater chance of catching it than on 10%. I don't know if this rumor is true, as I've had people say, you know, they've caught like a boss when they've thrown a net at like 8, 9% fine, and then, you know, I've had some ones where I've literally brought the boss down to uh, a few thousand health and the net is just totally resisted. So, I'm, I'm not too sure what to believe, at least the only thing to bear in mind is that you do need the boss to be under 10% before you throw the net, uh, or you simply cannot capture it. So, that's something to, uh, you know, bear in mind. Now, we're going to talk about... Uh, a brief idea of the location of these bosses. Um, now, bear in mind, like, the locations on the net, at least on the Mythic Taming net, are completely wrong. Like, pretty much all of them are wrong, apart from Harrod the Gatekeeper and Flame Lord. Uh, Terry and the Grim and Darudu the Watcher have wrong locations. Now, in the description of this video will be a link to the locations of the world bosses. So, you know, you can actually have that for reference. It also has pictures of them. I've also, I've done lovely, lovely ring games about this so you can check that out um, and yeah yeah that, that's basically it so basically uh, you know Dewstone Blains is home to Terry and the Grim who is the dragon that I have at the moment you can see him just to the right there he's very very cool looking uh, and he is just south of Bloodwing Cliff so around this kind of area that I'm picking on the map now then you have in Cinderstone Moor, you have Darudu the Watcher, who's kind of uh, in this area, just to the south of uh, Star Sunder Vents. So that's kind of the area that you want to find Darudu in. I, again, I believe it is the same model as Tarion. They 
do have a slightly different pool of abilities. I believe Terry in the Grim is a bit more tanky, as opposed to Darudu the Watcher, who is a bit more DPS focused. Um, so yeah, that's just something to uh, keep in mind. In Gwynoid Forest, uh, in Woods of the Forgotten, you have one of the legendary bosses, which is, um, sorry, Far Crag the Wanderer. Yeah, so he'll be in the Woods of Forgotten, which is kind of th like uh, to the, uh, what is it, the southwest of Gwynoid Forest. I cannot say the name of that zone. And then finally on the western continent in um, Liliot Hills, just to the west of Windshade, you're going to have the Wind Lord, who is this giant wind elemental. Pretty damn cool world boss to fight, so yeah, if you're looking for him, go there. And then on the um, eastern continent, we have a few bosses knocking about, so in Solace Headlands, uh, on the top of Queen Queen's Ridge is where you'll find the location of Flame Lord. He should be somewhere atop the hill if he's active, kind of romping about and causing a bit of carnage, and then moving into Vanale. Valan Eleli, I can't even say the name of it, but basically in the northern part of Drunken Paddles is where Harrod, Gatekeeper Harrod is. Now Gatekeeper Harrod is by far the hardest world boss to tame just due to the fact of the difficulty of the boss. Uh, Gatekeeper Harrod, unlike the other bosses, is actually a level 50 boss and will take uh, quite a few people to down. Adding to that you also need to put together a potion in the local area. I've got details of actually how to get all the ingredients for that etc on the written guide so check that out if you want to find out how to wake him up uh, because initially when you you know engage him he's going to be stowed and you need to throw some scented perfume at him to wake him up or something like that and then in Arkham Iris just uh, kind of in the center of Withered Fields you have the Windlord location for the east side and then going over to I believe it's a uh, yeah Falcroft Plains, Far Crag the Wanderer, Giant Stone Golem is going to um, basically wander up and down Falcon Rock Ward. So that's where to find him. So that's a quick 101 for all the boss locations. The final thing to note is that nets don't have a guaranteed chance to drop the uh, capture the boss. This is something that I kind of want to heavily enforce. The percentage chance to catch a boss seems to be around 25%. Uh, we can't say it for certain because there's not enough a, a large enough survey, but generally uh, people capture the boss um, within five, five tries. For me and a couple of other guildies we've all caught the uh, bosses within free trace um, so be aware guys it is unlikely that you are going to capture the first the boss on your first try so the first time you throw a net at it be prepared for disappointment that's all I can kind of like uh, you know key you in for one other pro tip that I wanted to mention is the uh, the the actual world bosses themselves once you capture them at first they are tradable so if you don't consume them and bind them to your character you will be able to trade that pet and possibly sell it on for more money now the one that sells the most at the moment is gatekeeper harrod and i think if you can find the right buyer you're looking at upwards of two, uh, two thousand gold um to actually sell this pet for. So literally, if you can get a decent group of level 50s together, capture Gatekeeper Harrod, or pretty much any of the other world bosses, you should be able to make a fairly decent profit, providing that luck is on your side and you don't have to throw like, you know, 10 nets at it to catch it. Because, you know, if you do that, you're probably gonna lose out. But yeah, look for what people are interested in. The world bosses are sellable. If not, they are really awesome as pets. They all seem to have some sort of a CC or unique movement ability so that's pretty damn cool um, I mean this one has a trip and uh, very cool stuff like Gargoyle's Breath so I am very very happy with my personal Terry and the Grim and the best part is you can actually use pets in Arena so you can take these world boss pets into 1v1 Arena which is pretty damn ridiculous but also pretty damn fun at the same time so ladies and gentlemen I hope you enjoyed the guide for capturing world bosses in Arc Age um, if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel like the video maybe leave a comment saying hey you enjoyed the video apart from that take care and have an absolutely great day